what's up everybody this is Gabe the Barber coming at you with a another video we're gonna be dropping content every single week if you like the video please consider subscribing as well as liking and commenting on the video here's the before as you can see here he previously had a taper <clears throat> I have cut this client a lot of times in the past but recently our schedules just have not you know worked well together so right now i'm gonna be basically going in with a haircut that wasn't mine um I'm not saying it was bad but he wanted to try out something different he told me what could we do and i told him that basically we could do a contour fade which is basically considered a drop fade so what i like to do with this is i like to start off with the c cup Basically, all I'm doing is going back in and creating that natural curve on his on his temple. Going in there, just cleaning it up, making sure that it's nice and sharp, not really going too deep into the head. Um, you don't want to push it back as either because once you do that, well, a few days later, it's going to look really awful. I'm trying out a new camera guys this is the um, Canon EOS M50 so hopefully the video quality is better as well as the voiceovers I did get me a mic so we're not using the MacBook mic <clears throat> so first what I like to do with this haircut is go in with my 5 op blade and basically go with the curvature of the head starting right at the temporal and right behind the ear, dropping it below the occipital bone. Again, you guys, always remember that when you're making your first guideline, try to make it as clean as possible as that will basically set the standard for the rest of your haircut. After that, I'll go in with the electric razor. Again, do not go into that first guy line that you made. It may look like I am, but I'm going right up to it and I'm pulling out basically in a C motion. I'm using the electric razor as my clipper. Again, you guys, I can't stress this enough. Do not go directly into that first guideline that you made. Once you're getting really close to it, make sure that you're pulling out using a C motion. It's gonna create more work for you and you know, we're not trying to create more work, we're trying to make it work easier, but still keeping it as efficient as possible. Right there, I was just deciding whether or not I wanted to start off with the half guard. But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna start off making my second guy line with the one and a half metal guard. And I'll be going basically about an inch up and again, following that first guy line. That's why I say that that first guy line, guy line is so, so important because it, everything else behind it just follows so right here you have two choices you can come in if you're comfortable with your clipper over comb and you can start clipper over combing that bulk or you can come in again with either the two metal guard or the one and a half guard and you could use their head um, as basically a guard you should you could say and you're gonna be basically using the curvature of their head to blend that going off of the parietal ridge. You can see here that I'm kind of doing that exact same thing with the one and a half guard open here. So basically it's a short two. So right here you can see that I have that that first guy line which is a bald, then I have that one and a half and now I have that short two. So now we're gonna go in and blend in that second guy line with the one guard open and closed. 
playing with it going back and forth up and down um you can see here right behind his ear he has a bump and he has a and he has a big dip again you know i always say this is that everybody's head is different Ugh, excuse me it's a little early today but anyway everybody's head is different you guys um you cannot go in and think that you're gonna get a perfect fade with just going with the half guard all the way around and thinking it's gonna blend it out you're gonna have to have some parts shorter some parts longer so if you're wondering what that might be like um where there's a bump you're gonna have to actually make that a little bit longer because it's gonna protrude out of the head and make it look shorter and make it look like a bald spot whereas if there's a dip in the head it's gonna look darker and it's gonna look, look like the hair is a little bit longer and it's not blended so you're gonna have to go into that little curvature of the head and basically make that shorter that's a, that's how you get your guys' blends to look fully the same all the way around um if we just sat there and we did one size all the way around thinking that it's gonna blend the exact same way you know all of our fades would look kind of weird or they'll look kind of funky you know they wouldn't look right so now I'm basically gonna go in and I'm gonna make a little bit of a I guess you could say I would say the odd A in Metal Guards, and I'm using Metal Guards as a reference due to um, one of the schools here in New Mexico, they're strictly using Metal Guards and a Masters, and a lot of the students come and they ask me what's equivalent to this, what's equivalent to that, so just think of that open basically as your odd A, with, without the fade blade on, of course. So now we're going to have the half guard on and we're going to be going open and close trying to blend out that second guy line. Still keeping that same curve to the entire fade. We do not want to try to bring up one side higher. We don't want to bring up the back anymore. We want to still keep that blend low towards the back to contour his head. If you guys do like the new color chart um, please leave a comment I would like to try to add a couple more things to the videos if you guys feel like there's something that I am missing or that I need to do please make sure that you guys let me know in the comment section below So you can see right here you guys the blend is coming together very smoothly um, we got basically all of the hard places all blended now it's basically just getting that blend nice and tight still keeping enough hair on the sides to where it's not a high fade and it's not too low you know Right here, we're gonna be erasing that bottom line. What I like to use is my Fade Blade Masters. I really shied away from these for a few years. I did not like using Masters. I felt like they were too heavy or they would get too hot right away. Even though I did cut hair pretty quick, they would still get hot. But these new cordless Masters have just been amazing. I really like them. If you guys haven't tried them, I suggest that you guys do, especially if you guys are having a hard time taking out that bottom line, be sure to put a fade blade on there. Just don't adjust it too much because you will cut somebody. I have before in the past, but that's my go-to when it comes to blending in those tight, tight spots and getting that perfect, perfect fade. It just takes the line out so effortlessly. I basically like to do all my detail work with the masters as you can see here um, just going in and right here most people will say that the fade is almost done that there's still a lot of the bulk towards the back and we will get back to that 
this side I'm gonna not really talk so much just for the fact that it it's gonna be the exact same steps as I did on that side again we're gonna go in with our 5 op blade and we're gonna make our first guideline keeping that curvature of the head the same then we're gonna go in with the one and a half metal guard making our second guideline after that we'll either go clipper over comb or a one and a half guard all the way open using the curvature of the head going up with the parietal ridge so you guys can watch this side and I'll be back
Okay guys, <clears throat> so for right here in the back, as you can see, the left side has a lot more bulk than the right side. We do take care of that. Again, you know, what I always suggest is that you guys go ahead and basically get the fade knocked out. Basically almost done. And then you go back after you line up everything and you go in and you detail. So right here, you guys, you can see he has a lineup already that has been established. What I like to do is I like to go in and basically go ahead and comb all the hairs down as much as possible. I'll first ask my client all those long hairs if they would like them cut off or not. And sometimes I say yes, yeah, sometimes I say comb them up and just cut under it. But in this case, he told me go ahead and just do what I need to do, what I think looks best. So if you guys watch any of my other videos, you guys will notice that I always start off in the middle. Um, most, most, of, mostly every barber does start off in the middle. It just, it's just the best way to start, in my opinion. You are able to get the straightest hairline. You get the most equal hairline. And right here on the corner, you guys will be able to actually see is that the previous barber that did cut his hair did push his hairline back so it is very very light right there you can see when I'm combing it back I'm trying to reestablish his natural hairline and again you guys I understand that sometimes you'll have to push someone someone's hairline back to create it to look straight but in this case there was no reason for him to get a pushback it was just a simple mistake everybody does make it but this is where color enhancement comes into play this is when this is the perfect time to offer your client color enhancement and for all the guys that are the real barbers or they say that using paint isn't real or that the haircut looks fake this and that you know you guys can see the haircut throughout the entire video you guys can see what it looks like there is nothing fake about it you know there's nothing wrong with getting color enhancement. I feel like a lot of clients that are wanting to get hair color enhancement, they're scared to do it because either they know that people, uh, excuse me, you guys, sorry, but they know that people like to talk about it. They like to point it out and basically makes them insecure, you know, and it's, there's nothing to be insecure about you guys. If it makes you guys look better and makes you feel good, that's all that matters, you know. I'm going to make sure that I could offer all of my clients the best services that I can possible. As you guys can see right here, I'm pointing out right there that the hairline was pushed back and that's basically where his hairline should be at but it's super super light because he does like to get haircuts weekly so his hair has not grown out enough for it to be back to normal but again you know that's where the color enhancement comes into play you know i could have went in there and i could have blended that little bit of the line into that but that's not what he wanted he still wanted to keep that darkness up there so he did allow me to do the color enhancement he doesn't get it every single time you know, this isn't something that he will get every single time, but it's something that I like to offer so that they feel comfortable and they're able to be confident when they're walking around with the haircut that I have given them. After I go ahead and I use the card, any card that you guys have, you know, works to do the hairline. I like to go in and I basically like to fill it in and I could see that there was a little bit of a splatter right there. I'll, I'll take care of that after I did notice that. But right here, I like to go in and basically just use my card, use its shape, and just curve it and basically get the perfect curvature for his C cup. Just to darken it up, make it look extra sharp, make it look basically picture perfect. Um, again, you guys, before they walk out, make sure that the color is on point, make sure their hair is on point, number one. If you need to blend the color, make sure you do that. And you guys can see on this side, it was dark, it wasn't pushed back, but he did want to match it to the other side. He wanted to enhance it and make it look extra. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to take care of our clients, you know, because that's what we do. That's what, that's what we all need to do. We cannot keep putting ourselves in a box because of what other people say. If your client wants it, go ahead and offer it. If it makes you more money, more power to you. 
there should be no reason why you're not offering every service available on the market to your clients but you can see right here that just enhances the haircut so much more this doesn't cover up anything because in my opinion hair color enhancement on a bad haircut it's gonna be a bad haircut period right here I asked him if he would like some on the top just because I could see that the top is actually very light towards the middle and he told me just go ahead and do my thing um, for the sake of the video I said you know what we're gonna go ahead and add hair color to the middle just to make everything just pop make it look perfect um, he was gonna go and get some pictures taken after this so just want to make him look fly made him making him feel confident with his haircut and I'm glad he came back you know I told him that's what happens when you cheat on your barber you know um, not saying that I'm perfect by no means am I perfect you know I try my best to give every client the best service possible but as you can see here the haircut is finished it's it's really really nice you know he loved this haircut he really did enjoy it and if you guys enjoyed this video please leave a comment and please consider subscribing but here it is the contour fade I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys it before and what he looked like look at that whole different person changes the whole shape of his head makes it look really really nice but thank you guys god bless you have a nice day